Hello YouTube, welcome to my 26th travel vlog. Today I am traveling from Tegdi, a place where India's largest dam is situated, to Rishikesh. If you see the distance, it's like less than 80 kilometers, which is from New Tegdi, which is uh, this one where I am starting this vlog. Well, that is the straightforward distance if you are going on the recommended road, which is NH94. But I am taking a roundabout road. I am not taking the NH94 all the way from New Tegdi to Rishikesh. And there is a reason for that. So I have taken the NH94 and the roads here look alright. And the distance from New Tegdi from here, it is 72 kilometers. The roads here look alright, but that is not the case for the entire stretch of the road. Well, before going into all that, I started this ride from Chamba. So that was the start of the ride from early morning. And from Chamba, I went to see Tegdi Dam, which is the biggest dam in India. So my previous vlog was about my ride to Tegdi Dam, which you can see from a distance. You cannot go near to the dam itself or the dam area itself. So this is the viewpoint you get of the Tegdi Dam from the mountain top. And this is my previous vlog, I will just give a link to my previous vlog just about here. So on this day, my plan was to visit Tegri Dam and then go to Rishikesh, reach Rishikesh by afternoon and see the places over there. So from here on, it is mostly a riding vlog. I am riding my motorcycle from New Tegri to Rishikesh. And I was expecting to reach there by afternoon and uh, see uh, the places in Rishikesh. So most of this video is about the views you can find on the roadside while you are go, uh, going from New Tegdi to Rishikesh on this NH94. But uh, I didn't go the entire distance on this road itself. I took a slightly left deviation because uh, there was a lot of construction activity happening on this road slightly ahead. Going forward you will see a lot of construction and it created a lot of dust on the road. So riding a two-wheeler in dusty condition was, uh, you know, it was not very good for me at least. Uh, if you are in a four-wheeler, you are in a covered vehicle, it is fine. But then uh, in dusty conditions is not good that you will see later on how much dust was created due to that construction. But here on this road, the views are like this. It, uh, there are very beautiful views on this road, good palm trees, uh, completely uh, empty roads on most of the places because the populated areas on these places are very less. So there is very less traffic on this road and uh, riding through this road was an experience until you reach that point where the construction activity starts. Mostly you are riding downhill because Rishikesh is at a lower altitude. And you will enjoy this ride up until that point where the construction starts. Well, this is some area where the construction has started, but this is only a small uh, stretch of the road. Uh, the actual construction is further down the road. And the name of that project is Chardam Pariyojana. So the Chardam Expressway project is to build a four-lane uh, highway, two lane in each direction from Rishikesh to the holy places in Uttarakhand. The objective of the project is to build an all-weather road. Now, when you see these roads, it looks it looks good. It looks very good. In fact, uh, these roads, while I started from uh, the Radun and I went to Masuri, then to Tanalti, then to Chamba, and I reached Tegdi Dam, and from there New Tegdi, and I'm going to Rishikesh. So till now, the roads look good. What I mean to say is, I haven't seen bad road conditions after I started from the Radun. All the way, all the routes which I took starting from the Radun has been very good. But I think that is not the case when you go to the other areas of Uttarakhand, especially the higher places where these uh, holy places are situated. Uttarakhand, due to its geography, because it is uh, it lies on the Himalayan mountain ranges, is prone to landslides uh, and then during the rainy season, the road conditions get deteriorated significantly and when you go to the higher places, the higher reaches of the Himalayan mountains where the uh, the holy places of the Hindu religion are situated uh, in, during some periods of the year you cannot access those places because of the very poor road conditions then there are a lot of accidents on this road because of the poor road conditions so the objective of this project is to improve the road condition 
and from just about here that construction activity starts you can see a lot of people uh, construction workers on the sides of the road uh, but that actual point where the road deteriorates due to that construction is yet to begin until that place there are still very good views on the on the sides of the road and even after that even after that there are still very good uh, good viewpoints but uh, due to that uh, congestion and heavy traffic and the pollution and the dust you just uh, just want to escape from that place it is just about from here that the actual construction area starts and you can see here uh, the two lane road that was already there has uh, reduced to a single lane road most times and due to this there is a lot of congestion lot of dust and lot of pollution now this is NH94, a very important road which uh, takes you to Gangotri and Yamunotri, two very important holy places of the Hindu religion. Now let me give a brief background of this project. It is called the Char Dham Expressway and Char Dham means uh, four abodes or a set of four pilgrimage sites in India. Now the Vaishnavite Hindu segment or the Vaishnavite Hindus believe that visiting these four holy sites helps you to achieve salvation. Now the main sites are Badrinath uh, which is in Uttarakhand, then Dwarka which is in Gujarat, Puri which is in Odisha and Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu. So only Badrinath in Uttarakhand falls into the major Char Dham Yatra. But there is also a Chota Char Dham Yatra or the small Char Dham which is to the four holy sites in Uttarakhand. Now I am not sure if the Char Dham Expressway project is trying to actually connect all the four religious sites which is actually located in four corners of India. But anyway, the Chota Char Dham Yatra, which lies on this route, actually uh, there are four holy sites within the Chota Char Dham Yatra. Uh, they are Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath. So these are the four holy sites and this route, this NH94, which starts from Rishikesh, goes to Gangotri and Yamunotri. Now we have reached that place where the construction activity has started. So this is the condition of the road condition for the project uh, during October 2018. I'm not sure how it is now or at the time of you seeing this uh, video. But uh, this was a condition when I was going through that place. And you can see the amount of dust and the, uh, and the, and the number of vehicles coming from that direction. Because there was a traffic block. All these vehicles were blocked on uh, one segment of the road to allow the vehicles from other direction to pass through so now they are uh, allowing vehicles from one direction to pass through because uh, on some places like this there is only a single lane uh, road because they are trying to expand this road into a four lane road and the sides of the hills the mountain sides have been blasted and uh, all that uh, rubble and the boulders and the mud and the sand and the rocks have fallen onto the actual road in fact the road here should be very good and this place the road is very good but uh, in certain places like this uh, all the sand has fallen onto the road so this road condition this dust filled road condition actually stresses for like uh, 10 or 15 kilometers and some places you cannot see the vehicles because uh, at both ends at both places they have been blocked and uh, just me i was allowed through because i was on a two-wheeler and see here you can see the long uh, line of vehicles waiting to uh, open up the roads but even on this stretch of road there are uh, good viewpoints and you can see from the distance the long line of vehicles waiting to go through that stretch after going through this route for like uh, 10 or 15 kilometers i got completely fed up because of the road condition because of the dust I mean the condition of the road is fine because I've gone through far worse roads than this but the amount of dust is the problem and you can see from the distance this what you see in front is dust it is not like fog or anything it is not a fire or fog it is actual dust when I started this ride early in the morning from Chamba and in fact uh, when I started this ride from Daradun itself uh, I was getting completely very good road conditions uh, nothing like this very good roads I got till New Tegedi and like about 20 kilometers thereafter but uh, going through this road uh, 
completely destroyed my experience even though there are like good viewpoints on the sides of this road so i was trying to find a way to get out of this place to get out of this road and i found one somewhere near to rishikesh i think about 20 or 30 kilometers before rishikesh i found a left turn and this is that road so i took this left turn which is like a roundabout road now I do not know the name of this route, I only know that it starts somewhere after uh, Narendra Nagar which is on the NH94 and I, I was trying to find out some uh, way to get out of that dust filled road and uh, I was checking Google Maps and I found this road and uh, this road in fact it is not a direct uh, road, it takes you to more than like uh, 40 kilometers upwards that is uh, Instead of that uh, NH94, if you are going through that NH94, I think you will reach Rishikesh in uh, within like 20 kilometers. But uh, going through this road, it takes like uh, 20 kilometers more, so like 40 kilometers to uh, to cover the entire distance. But this road had very good viewpoints, and this what you see is Rishikesh, and the river you see is the Ganges River. From here, Rishikesh looks very close by like it is only about 20 kilometers or so and in fact it is that way that is if you are going on that NH94 itself you can reach Rishikesh in 20 kilometers but since I took this roundabout route which uh, goes through like uh, some of the other places I don't know even the names of the places and at some places the road conditions were far worse but the only thing was that only advantage was that there was very less dust or no dust at all because there is no traffic on this road there was a very less populated places in fact i didn't see uh, a lot of villages or even a lot of houses on this road so my plans to reach rishikesh by the afternoon and to see all the um, tourist places or whatever was there in rishikesh was uh, completely gone but anyway i got a few surprises while going on this road because uh, while going even though initially the road conditions were worse there are a lot of beautiful views on this road i wouldn't recommend anybody to take this route especially people who are coming on long rides who are not uh, aware of these places so if you go through these places it is easier to get lost than to get to some uh, some place my objective of taking this road was to escape the dust and the congestion of the roads and I got it. Along with that I got these beautiful views. But the problem on these roads is that there is no population. I didn't see many people, many houses or any vehicle on this route. So if you get stuck, if something happens like a puncture or you run out of fuel or some other problem, uh, there are nobody to help you and uh, on this route i think uh, there is no mobile signal so if you want to call somebody if you want to call for help or if you want to ask for help I, it could be very difficult so taking this route i think was some other kind of adventure now there is always the fear that uh, there uh, something should happen like uh, some problems to the bike and you will get stuck and then you will find it uh, difficult or even impossible to get out of this place because there is nobody nearby then there is the other thing or the other feeling of the adventure the adventurous feeling of going through these unknown roads where you don't know even the roads are taking you to the right place because there is no mobile signal and you cannot even uh, look at the google maps because it doesn't work there is no mobile data coverage on these places on this route so when i was going i was trying to find out the, which road was the correct road because there are a lot of side roads going left and right and uh, you don't know which one to take Anyway, luckily for me, I was able to get to Rishikesh without any problems. And going through this route, I got some off-roading experience because at some places the roads were in very poor condition. The, at some places there were no roads at all. But going downhill, going uh, nearer to Rishikesh, the roads uh, got better. And I think that is the way a ride should be. Uh, going on any ride the idea is to see new places new things uh, new road conditions and all that so every time very good roads very beautiful roads very less traffic and all is uh, like uh, high expectations i mean you cannot expect every time 
everything to be perfect, everything to be going your way. And going through this route, I wasn't expecting all these viewpoints that the view of Rishikesh and especially view of the Ganges River. Moreover, while going through this road, I chanced upon a waterfall. It is not a very well-known tourist place, but uh, going ahead on this road, there is a small waterfall where there is less uh, tourist activity. And uh, that was a good experience because I was not expecting to see any waterfall or I wasn't trying to see any waterfall or any other tourist places. I was just trying to reach Rishikesh. So for me personally, I think it was a very good experience. Initially, the road conditions after getting into this left turn, this roundabout route, initially the road condition was not very good. So I was thinking at that time to get back, but then I continued. And uh, after going some distance, I got to see such beautiful views on this road. Now, this is not that waterfall which I was talking about. This is only a very small stream, I think. Uh, which uh, merges with the Ganges river. So there are a lot of these small streams starting uh, on the uh, uh, on the hillsides and going further most of these small river streams merge together to create a larger waterfall. Now I think that these places uh, the route which I took there is a possibility for uh, tourism development in these places because uh, uh, there are a lot of small 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 streams that starts from the top of the mountain and uh, all that is going to merge on to the Ganges river which you see on the uh, down uh, on the downward slope so we are just nearby rishikesh i think uh, from here rishikesh is only like uh, 10 kilometers and uh, it is from here that i saw that small waterfall and there were very less people like uh, there were less than 10 people all together at that place when i reached that place so this is not a very well-known waterfall and it is not a very big one uh, but it was very beautiful uh, because the uh, i think uh, because of the less tourist activity the waterfall is preserved in its natural form any kind of tourist activity i think has both negative and positive effects the positive effect is the livelihood for the local people and the local economy the negative effect is the uh, is the pollution and the congestion and the traffic and all that cost to the place. But this place, I'm not sure the name of this place or the name of this waterfall even. I tried to locate this waterfall after uh, coming out of the place, after reaching the Radon. I tried to locate this waterfall to tell it to other people, but I couldn't locate it on Google Maps even. So this is not a very famous waterfall and I think people come over here just from hearsay like uh, people come here and they tell it to others like uh, there is a waterfall over here there is some good places to visit here and so that is how the people comes to visit these places. Now that place was very beautiful it was well maintained or rather uh, the nature has maintained in its purest form. So I spent some time over there, I, in fact I spent like uh, 2 hours over there because there was nobody there. It was a very calm, very peaceful place. And you can take a bath in that very small river stream, it is not a very big waterfall. And the when I went there, the climate condition was very good because I went there in October, it was not very cold or not very hot. So. The climate was very good to reach that place or to go to that place anyway because of that small stop in fact it was not small stop it i spent about two hours over there and uh, because of that my plans to reach rishikesh and to see the places in rishikesh whatever uh, is there to see in rishikesh i'm not sure what are the things to see there but whatever is to be seen there i could not see because i reached rishikesh well uh, into the afternoon in fact uh, towards the evening and this place I think is only like uh, 5 kilometers from Rishikesh so from Rishikesh this waterfall the, that location is very close by so overall this uh, ride today's ride which I started from T Chamba uh, going to see the highest dam in India Degri Dam and after that uh, going through that dust filled road 
and then taking that left diversion to see these beautiful views and all that was very satisfactory. Now this is Rishikesh and this what you see is the Ganges river. So I reached this place like uh, well into the afternoon and towards the evening. So I didn't uh, stop there. I just stopped there for 5 minutes and then I was on my way to Dharadun. In fact this vlog ends my trip to Uttarakhand. I was in Dharadun for uh, 2 months. I stayed there for 2 months and uh, after that I went to Rajasthan. So that is all about today's ride. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, do press that like button and also try to share this video with your friends. And also please try to support me by subscribing to my channel. Now my next video vlogs are about my trip to Rajasthan. Like I'm going to Ajmer, Udaipur, Chittorgad and all that. And what you're seeing now is a preview of my next uh, video vlogs. In fact, this is the Udaipur Pal Palace. So that is all in this vlog and as everybody says let me remind you once again try to subscribe to my channel and also hit that information button so that you can see my next video vlogs as I upload them. Thank you.